High Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled, Final Ultimatum. The trouble with you, Jim, is that you're too damned old-fashioned. Now, easy on, Reg. Just hold your hair on. I've got good reasons for resisting change. There's a world recession right now. Fuel prices are going up and up. Buying two more planes could bankrupt us. Business is a gamble. If you don't gamble, you go down the drain. Right, I agree with you, Reg. But now is not the time. <sighs> Look, there's cargo for us to fly, Jim. It's not that the business isn't there for us to pick up. For instance? Well, what about Decker Engineering? They use Arctic Air Cargo Services. Yeah, and we can snatch the contract right out from under Arctic's noses. We can lose them when it comes to efficiency. Well, Deckers won't break a contract and has two more years to run. Then we can tender for it. We have to expand, Jim. Can't you see that? This is just plain crazy. Arctic have doubled their air cargo fleet in the last year. And their planes are flying half empty. Oh. Not to mention that the company's up to its ears in debt. And right now, we are on a solid financial footing. We've got a good cash flow. When we start borrowing to buy more planes at these horrific interest rates, we go bust. Is that what you want? You know damn well I don't want that, but I do want to see us grow. We'll grow, Reg. But at the right time. By that time, it'll be too late. Okay, Jim. I can't do anything without your agreement, but I advise you to think it over. You're just in time for coffee. Thanks. I could use a cup. What brings you here? Oh, I've just had a go at Jim. He's as damn cautious as they make him. The two planes you want to buy? He won't even listen. All I get out of him is, beware the recession. He's right. The company's doing fine, so why tamper with it? Oh, no. I can tell he's been talking to you. He has to. We're married. Well, I was hoping you'd talk him into it. Oh, no way. I'd be wasting my breath. Yep. You know, I'm beginning to regret the partnership. I don't see why. Neither of you could have started up Saturn Air Freight without the other. You're a lousy businessman, but you can fly. Jim's an excellent businessman, but can't fly. Well... You both put all your capital into buying your first plane. The idea being that you did the flying and Jim attended to the business side. Okay, so that's how it is. And now you have four planes. You attend to the operations and Jim does the scribbling. He's scribbling us out of business. Oh, how can you say that? Every year our profits have doubled. Even this year, in spite of the recession. Oh, it's nice coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Reg. Relax. As Jim says, this is the period for marking time. Enjoy what you have. What happened, Ellen? When? What do you mean? Between us. Reg, you promised that would never be mentioned between us again. I'm sorry, but I don't feel any different towards Please, you. Please, Reg, it was a mistake. For me, it was wonderful. I still love you, Ellen. No, no don't touch me. It's over, Reg. Accept it. Go home to Carla. She needs you more than I do. Oh, nothing seems to be right. Oh, Reg, cheer up. You've got a lovely home, a beautiful wife, and two gorgeous children. Yeah, sure. What more can a man expect from life? Oh, I don't know. You, you're just depressed because you're bored. You need to take an interest in something. I did. You. Once, Reg. One day of weakness. But never again. If you must, Philander, fly down to Montreal and find someone there to play with. Jim never suspected, did he? I mean, what have you got to lose, Ellen? We could get away with it again and again. 
He's too damn busy with his paperwork to notice. How can I make you understand, Reg? I don't want to get away with anything. I don't want you to touch me again, ever. Ellen. If you knew how guilty I felt these last few weeks, I... You know, you surprise me. I thought you were adventurous. And instead, you've turned out to be nothing but a dutiful housewife. <sighs> Life's a bore. I wish you'd snap out of this depression. It's catching. Where is Carla? Oh, she's taking the kids to the lake for the day. Another dutiful housewife. One day you'll be thankful that she is. Oh, well. I guess I'll go for a drive. I might even take a spin down to Montreal, and I'll come back late tonight. Well, have a nice time, Reg. And give my love to Carla when you see her. Yeah, sure, I will. How was it, Jim? Oh, I still reckon you're the best cook this side of the Rocky Mountains. Oh, I see. So who do you know that's better on the other side? Okay, okay, the best in the world. <laughs> uh, Reg called at lunchtime. Hmm? He was in an awful state. Yeah, we had an argument. He told me. I think he was looking for sympathy, but he didn't get it. Well, he's so damned impetuous. By next week, he'll be coming to me with another crazy idea. He's bored and... I don't think things are working out well between him and Carla. Domestic affairs shouldn't interfere with business. Sure. But you left here terribly depressed. <laughs> now to buy planes now would be financial suicide. Why can't he be satisfied with things the way they are? He should do more flying. Yeah. Well, it could be it. Just acting as a relief is only taking him up once a week. But it was his own idea. I can take over operations, but he won't let me. But with just four aircraft, there isn't enough work to keep his mind occupied. Ah, why should I worry about him? Because he's your partner, Jim. Oh, surely you can both sit down and work something out between you. Find something that'll give him more work to do. Like buying two more planes, hmm? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I agree with you on that. Look, I'm not familiar with the workings of an air freight business, but... I'm sure there must be a solution to Reg's problems. I wish the hell I knew it. And they had a lovely day, oh, For heaven's sake, Carla, can't you shut that kid up? It's yelling is getting on my nerves. Your child has to cry sometimes. Uh. All right, Peter, there's your bottle. I'm getting daddy out of here, man. There, is that better? <laughs> Bribery. But efficient. What's the matter with you, Reg? Be honest with me. Nothing's the matter. Just leave me alone, will you? Your nerves are shot. Shut up! You should see a doctor. Get some help. Look, just watch your mouth, woman. I don't need a doctor. If you can just keep the kids from squawking, I'll be okay. It's one of the perils of being a father. Uh, you went to see Ellen today. How do you know? She phoned me. Why? To tell me how depressed you are. Is that all? Yes. You just talked, am I right? I suppose so. Well, that isn't an answer. We just talked. Yes, I believe you. I don't think she would have phoned me if anything had happened between you. Oh, I... stop moaning, will you? It only happened once, that's all. A couple of hours of fun, that's all it was. I wonder. Well, wonder all you like. There's nothing between us, not last week, not today, and not in the future. Forget it, will you, Carla? Just pretend it never happened. Everything will be fine. I do try to forget. I wouldn't have known if you yourself hadn't told me in a fit of drunken boasting. Hmm? I should take lessons from her, you told me. Did I? Honest? I should have called round and asked her for the lurid details, shouldn't I, Reg? Look, Carla, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't, don't ever mention to Ellen that you know, please. She, the embarrassment... Just forget all about it. I'm trying, Reg. Are you flying tomorrow? Maybe. I think I'll go for a spin in the Piper Cub. After I've done my day's work, of course, which takes me less than an hour. Morning, Reg. Hi. I'm taking the Cub up for a spin. Oh, yeah? Going to be long? Uh, I don't know. I... Might take it into my head to fly down to Montreal. I want to talk to you about that little fracas we had yesterday. I'm not in the mood, Jim. We can talk later. 
Okay, as you wish. Unless you change your mind. No, sorry, Reg. I'm still standing by what I said. Okay, Jim. I'll be seeing you. Hello? Hello, Ellen. I'm on my way over. Oh, Reg, I I'm busy doing my housework. Well, hurry it up. I'll be there in ten minutes to take you out. <laughs> Honestly, Reg, I, I can't. Ten minutes is all you got. <sighs> well, he's becoming a nuisance. Come on, Ellen. Do your good. You're looking pale. Reg, why don't you take Carla flying instead? She's down to the lake. Again. I don't think Jim will like me going flying with you. Why not? He's too tied up to worry. Oh, come on, please, Ellen, just to keep me company. How long would we be? A couple of hours, no more. I'll run east as far as the foothills, taking the scenery, and then we come back. Well, I don't know. Come I... on, when was the last time you flew? Three years ago. Well, there, it'll do you good then. <laughs> Put a bit of color in your cheeks. Reg... This is straight. I mean, you're not planning to land somewhere and try some monkey business. Dead straight, Alan. Believe me. We're just good friends now. I accept that. Well, how about it? Okay. It'll make a nice change. <laughs> I'm giving you five minutes to get ready. little plane for sightseeing. Don't climb too high, Red. Oh, it's okay. I'll stay below the cloud ceiling. There's your house. <laughs> yeah. And the lake, about three miles beyond. <laughs> you told me a lie, Red. What do you mean? Carla is at home. I can see your children playing in the garden. Okay, so I'm caught out. I had to make some excuse so you'd come with me. But what's that you're getting out? Oh, you got eyes. My best bottle of malt whiskey. You're not going to drink. Why not? Well, it's illegal while you're flying. Oh, who's to know? Come on, Ellen. Don't be so damn prissy. Reg, if you want to drink, land me. No. I can handle this plane when I'm asleep. Look at it, just like a car. Reg, I want you to take me down. No way, Ellen. We're up for a joyride, and that's just what it's going to be. Yep, come in. Sorry, Jim. Am I disturbing oh, you? Oh, hi, Carla. No, not at all. Come in. Sit down. Hi. Have you seen Reg? Yeah, he's up in a pipe of cub. Went for a spin. Where's Ellen? At home. She isn't. I just called. The house is locked up. Oh, well, that's funny. She doesn't usually go out in the morning. Maybe she slipped out to the store. Well, her car's in the garage. Oh, do you, do you try our neighbors? Sometimes she goes for a chat. Well, I ask. They haven't seen her. Do you think she's with Reg? Well, I don't know. Why should she be? It's possible. Nah, I'm sure Reg would have told me. Can you find out? Yeah, sure. Simple. Radio's just here. I'll call him up. Right. Hello, control calling cub. Come in. Over. Hello, control calling cub. Come in, please. Over. Hi, Jim. Something wrong? Over. Carla's here. She's been looking for Ellen. Is she with you? Over. Well, that's just what I said. Are you alone there? Over. Ellen is sitting right beside me. Oh. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Why is Carla looking for her? Well, search me. Hold on. Carla, was there something you wanted to tell her? No, I was just curious. <laughs> you hear that, Reg? She was just curious. Yeah. When Carla gets curious, it means there's trouble brewing. <laughs> anyway, Jim, we're okay up here. Back in a couple of hours. See you then. Over and out. There you are, Carl. Nothing to worry about. Oh, Jim, you big, lovable, gullible fellow. It's time you realize the truth. What truth? About Reg and Ellen. They're lovers. There you are, Ellen. He 
couldn't care less whether you're with me or not. All right, Grant. Now, all I want you to do is fly back to the company airstrip and land. You're not enjoying yourself, though? No. Oh, come on. Where's your spirit of adventure? This is an adventure. The way you're drinking, Reg, it's closer to suicide. Oh, stop fussing. I'm just fine. But I do want you to get a divorce from Jim and marry me. Oh, don't be stupid. It's what I want. I don't want to hear any more. Good. I see you're turning back. Oh, yeah, I'm turning back. But not for the reason you want. What do you mean? Look, I'm tired of your husband telling me what I can and can do. I'm going to give the orders for a change. And before I land, I want two promises. One from you, one from him. That whiskey's gone to your head, Reg. It made me see clearly how to handle things. If I can't have a little of my own way, then life just isn't worth living. You're talking like a spoiled child. What are these promises you're demanding? From you, I want to promise that you'll divorce Jim and marry me. Jim, I want him to agree to buy those two new planes. This is being ridiculous. He won't agree. And I have no intention of marrying you, so just forget it, will you? Then we die together. Now I know you're just trying to scare me. Oh, yeah. You just wait till we get over the airstrip. And what then? The ultimatum. If you and Jim refuse to go along, then... No ammo. We go out in a wall of flame... So Reg says. I believe him. Ah, Helen and I were going through a sticky patch in our relationship at the time. <laughs> I suppose I asked for it. Just wish it hadn't been Reg. Well, I gotta say, Carly, you're being remarkably cool and sensible about it. Oh, there's no option. I have to consider the children. Why should they suffer for my pride? Yeah. Well, more married folks should look at it that way, but anyway, what you told me, I'll keep it to myself as best I can. I don't think Reg will find Ellen quite so willing if he tries again. I hope you're right, Jim. Hello? Hello? Control here, over. Jim, I want you to take this as calmly as you can. Reg is flying us back to the airstrip. He's as drunk as a coot and threatening to crash the plane unless... Uh, Go on, Ellen. Tell him the facts. Are you there, Jim? Young here, Ellen, over. He wants a promise that you'll buy those two planes... If you don't, he says he'll crash the plane onto the office building. That's right. Why, why are you doing your talking for him? Because... Oh, go on. Tell him everything. He wants me to divorce you and marry him. Jim. Well, what do you think about that idea, Ellen? I've already told him to drop dead. <laughs> he thinks it's funny, Jim, but I'm terrified out of my wits. Reg has drunk most of a bottle of malt whiskey. Okay, try not to be scared. I think he's bluffing. That's easy for you to say, Jim, but I don't think he is. No. Okay, Jim. You've got the picture now. What's your answer? I think you should land and see a shrink. Listen, in a few minutes I'll be over the landing strip. I want an answer by then. I'm closing down the radio until then to give you a chance to make up your mind over and out. Jim, what are we going to do? I don't know. Reg is out of his mind. Well, you can agree to his terms, and when he lands, tell him to go fly a kite. At least that way, Ellen will be safe. Yeah, I was thinking along those lines. Reg, will you stop drinking and listen to me? I've been listening all along. As for drinking, the damn bottle's empty. What if Jim agrees and says he'll buy the new planes? Huh? There's no way you can hold him to it. Jim always keeps his word. Oh, he can easily renege if it's been given under duress. And what about you? You're part of the deal. There's no way I'll leave Jim. You can forget that. Okay, so we go out and blaze the glory. <sighs> Look, is, is there any way I can make you see sense? What I want makes sense already, Ellen. I love you and I want to see our company grow. What good will a one-sided love affair do you? You'll learn to love me again. I never loved you in the first place. Huh? How can I make you understand? Why are you still clutching that empty bottle? Come, here, give it to me. I'll put it in the back. Okay. Thanks. You're coming over the airstrip now. <coughs> Sorry, Reg. Does this radio work? Oh, that must be it. Hello? 
Jim, can you hear me? Helen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Oh. Why don't you come up to your strip now? Jim, I've knocked Reg out with a bottle. He's slumped in his seat and his head's bleeding badly. No. How are you going to get down? Just, just tell me what to do. You're coming in at just over a thousand feet. Somehow you'll have to get him out of his seat. Well, I, uh, I could unfasten his seatbelt and pull him away. No, 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 don't do that yet. Look, first you need more altitude. Can you reach the stick in front of Reg? Uh, yeah? Well, I'm here. Pull it back gently, not too far. Watch the dial mark horizon in front of you. Yeah? Let it go up slightly. There's another dial marked altitude. Do you see it? Um, yes. Okay, the needle should go around to the figure two. Right. When it gets there, ease back the stick until the horizon's level. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Yes, I, I'm pulling it back now. Well, careful you don't move the stick right or left. The, the, uh, the altimeter needle is moving. Good. Now keep your eyes on that and the horizon. I can see you through the window, Ellen. You're just doing fine. It's scary, Jim. Yeah, I know. But you must keep your wits about you. There's nothing to it. Just know how. The, the needle is coming up to the figure two. Uh... Right, it's on it now. Okay. Now you level out by easing the stick forward. Keep your eyes on that false horizon. Jim, Jim, I think I've hurt Reg pretty badly. There's so much blood. Carl's going to call our emergency service. Don't worry about Reg now. Concentrate on getting that plane down. Are you level yet? Uh, yes. The, the markers on false horizon are parallel. Good, that's how they should be. Good girl. Okay. Now look in front of you. There are two yellow switches marked autopilot. You see them? Uh, y- yes. Good. Now switch them on. They should light up. Right. Okay, they're lit. Right. Now you're on autopilot, so you're free to try and get Rich out of that seat. Be as quick as you can. Every second you're getting further away from the airstrip. I'll push him down to one side. <laughs> He's such a weight. What a mess. Oh, Damn, no wonder I forgot his seatbelt. Uh, there he goes. Okay, Jim, I'm in his seat. Good. Now, first I want to know your fuel position. Can you see the gas gauge? What's it reading? Uh, now, which one? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, the, the needle reads 32. That's fine. You've got no problems there. Are you comfortable? Oh, that's a laugh. I'm shaking like a giant bowl of jello. Okay, Jim. Now I'm in control again. Good girl. Shift the stick a little to the right, and at the same time, watch the horizon in your compass. Okay. The compass should be reading... Yeah, let me see. Ah, uh, it's reading 187. Okay, you've got it. Right, now ease the stick over and let the compass needle come around until it reads 007. Ah, uh, the wing is dipping. That's all right, it should. Now don't worry about it. Just watch that compass needle. Where is it now? Uh, 2.45 and going up. Well, that's just fine, Alan. Well, it's getting close to zero, zero, 007. Straighten the stick up again. Jim, there's a problem. Yeah, what is it? It's Reg. He's coming, too. No, not at the time. You hit him with something. Well, I, c- I couldn't, Jim. Not again. Besides, there isn't anything to hit him with. What am I going to do, Jim? He's crawling around behind me. <laughs> in the ambulance. Is something wrong? Reg has come to and Ellen's not answering. Ellen, can you hear me? Oh, yes, Jim. What's he doing? He's sitting, just staring and doing nothing. Well, you must be still dazed. What's your compass reading? Oh, yeah, um, it's, um, it's three, four, five. Okay, okay, straighten up now. Push the stick a little forward and watch your altimeter. Right. In a few minutes, you've got to get ready to reduce power and lower the flaps and undercarriage. Oh, Jim. Don't worry, Ellen. As long as you do exactly what I tell you, there's nothing to fear. Here. It'll make you feel better, darling. What's the phone? 
call? A caller from the hospital. Huh? Reggie's suffering from concussion and severe lacerations. Uh, he's damn lucky he wasn't incinerated in a crashed plane. And so am I. What's going to happen to him now? Ah, uh, there's no evidence to say he really intended to carry out his threat. It's like Carlos says, I think he's mentally unstable. Some intensive psychiatric treatment will put him right. Jim, hmm? I only realized just after I landed, I thought you couldn't fly. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you didn't mention that while you were up there. What? I was standing at the mic here with just a textbook and my own what? memory of the plane's instrument panel in my mind. You mean... I mean you were lucky. No, Alan, we were both lucky. I feel dizzy just thinking about it. Well, just one word of warning for the future. No more joyriding with strange men. <laughs> you need never worry about that again, Jim. That's a most solemn promise. <laughs> High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.